Hello, we're here to look at the Hitachi Pi Info TV. We've got it here on the wall. It's a Raspberry Pi driven 1975 television. Shows you important information that you might want to check before leaving the house. It's mounted here right in my hallway so I can check it just before I go to work. Uh, this page here, as you see, is showing us a calendar appointment upcoming and a bit of a look at the weather and the time on there. This is a DAC board page and uh, it's easily configurable online and you can point it at your own calendar and as you see here I've pointed it at my own Google Photos as well and it's really cool because you can use it to display animated GIFs too really like the animated GIFs on there so the way it works is that when you switch it on or when it boots up it loads up a series of Chromium pages full screen and then you can flick through them so you can stand here getting your wallet and your keys together and while you're doing that you can have a little flick through the available content to just check the information before leaving the house. Now as you can see what's happened here is that because I've been standing away for it for a few seconds it's gone to sleep and it does that all the time so that uh, if you're not standing in front of it it'll turn off and it does that because it's got a, a PIR sensor, a passive infrared sensor just underneath here looking out of the frame so it's, although I'm standing near it, it's not activated at the moment because there's a, a whacking great tripod and a, tra and a table in the way. But if I just put my hand under there, then that's woken it up again. That's cool. Okay, so to navigate through the pages, uh, we wanted to keep all of the original controls in place. So although I've got a mouse and keyboard down here, didn't really want to use that all the time. So the way that you move from one page to the next is to use the original tuning dial that you'd originally use to change channels. So if we just give that a go. So there we go, we switch to BBC News, check all the headlines before we leave. So we've got the tuning dial here and that's wired to a rotary switch. And then the rotary switch is wired to the GPIO pins in the Pi and that's what uh, lets it twist around and switch the tabs from one tab to the next. So if we try the next one, and that switches us over to the weather. So we can have a bit of a check. Yeah, not looking too good. The other knobs, uh, we've got this one here, which was the volume knob, and this one handles scrolling. So you can scroll up and down the page there. Let's check out the forecast summary. You can scroll back. And that's accomplished using the circuit from an old USB mouse in there. So it's a scroll wheel from an old mouse built into the case. Let's have a look at the next one. So this next tab is a feed from one of my Raspberry Pi Zero cameras. Just looking out the front, we use it to keep an eye out for the Tesco man or if we're looking out for the postman. And it's really handy just to keep an eye out what's going on out there. And here's the next one. And this is our Google shopping list. Cruise the fresh and try again. Okay, let's refresh. This button here is refresh. You gonna refresh? Okay, now we've refreshed. Yeah, this is the Google shopping list. And we've got quite in the habit of adding to this using the uh, Google Pi Intercom and the Google Home. So it's worth checking. It's something that I like to check before leaving the house just in case there's anything that I need to pick up. Now I could use the keyboard and mouse that's down here to add something onto that, but just round the corner, just round there, is where the Google Pi Intercom lives. So if I just shout round to it. Hey Google, add cat food to the shopping list. Okay, I've added cat food to your shopping list. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear what she said there, but we definitely saw it spring up on the, uh, on the page there, so that looks good. So round on the left hand side over here we've got a series of buttons and those are the buttons that control the settings for the HDMI panel. It's a 800 by 600 panel that I bought from Pi Moroni and it's got all the switches there so that you can set the, uh, the brightness and the contrast, all that kind of thing. So see the background's changed again there, that's a uh, really handy feature of DAC board, but makes video continuity a bit difficult, never mind. Um, so that's pretty much it. You turn this dial to switch between your channels, your 
tabs. Uh, this one does your scrolling and this one does your refreshing. You've got the buttons to control the screen on the side there. And then underneath is the infrared sensor that detects motion. So it turns the screen on when you come near it. So the whole assembly is held onto the wall with a French cleat or a Z bracket. Uh, and that makes it nice and easy to take off and put on again. Keeps it really stable and it's really easy to make it nice and level as well. So if I just show you, if I just pull this bit of conduit off here, it comes off nice and easily. Then we can just lift the handle and off we go. And then we can see all the, uh, all the Raspberry Pi goodness inside it. Uh, let's go and have a quick closer look to see what's inside and how it all works. Right, so here's the Info TV on the table now. Turned it over so that we can get a good look at what's going on inside. Let's have a little tour of the back. Uh, so down at the bottom here, we've got the PIR sensor, the Passive Infrared Sensor, and that's what detects motion when somebody walks past it and disables the screensaver so that you can see the information that's being displayed. You can just make out the two little trim pots there that adjust its sensitivity to just the right level so that it's not coming on when you don't want it to and that it's coming on reliably when you do want it to. Uh, moving along a little bit, this ribbon cable connects the driver board. This is the driver board for the LCD panel and that this uh, ribbon connects the, the board to the panel which you can see through the plastic there being held in by uh, the original screws just there around the four corners. Uh, the, the LCD panel itself is powered from the Pi so here's where the power goes in obviously loops around goes along the top and into the Pi there getting its 5 volts from the Pi itself. Also coming along this side, we've got the HDMI cable and that snakes around here, connecting up with the Pi. Lastly, for the LCD driver board, you've got this one here, this connector here, and that loops around and that connects up to this board here, which you probably can't see, um, but it's tucked away right down there. And the reason it's down there is that it's got five micro switches on and those are the switches that control the LCD boards, uh, the LCD panels options. So you can press the button on the side and you can adjust the brightness, adjust the contrast, all that sort of thing there. So at the top we've got the handle. Uh, the handle screws through the case and then holds on this piece of laminate flooring which has the Z bracket bolted onto it. Then over on the right, on the top level, we've got the Pi and we've got the USB connectors going into it. Uh, the first one, as we said, was for the power for the board. This one is for the mouse, uh, the mouse that controls the scrolling uh, with the volume knob. And that just goes into the lower deck there where the mouse board and the rotary switch and the push switch, push switch are, um, are stored. You can just see the rotary switch there actually. Uh, we've got the Pi on top and all the GPIO connections. Uh, these ones are obviously for the PIR and these ones Go to a little board here which you probably can't see and that's for the rotary switch and the push switch that control the channel changing and the refreshing and then lastly we've got the pi power supply coming out here and then going down and obviously as we saw on the wall there's a little bit of conduit there but it's really handy that the whole thing will run just off one one uh, official raspberry pi power supply i think that's pretty much it for a tour of the rear um, as I said, there's a link in the description to the Instructable and also to the code on GitHub. And, you know, check out my other projects. There might be something else you like there. Thank you.